Consider this problem. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of the function that is the inverse tangent of x? How can we find the answer? It helps to know what the graph of inverse tan or arc tangent of x looks like. There's two horizontal asymptotes. The first one is y equals pi over 2. And the second horizontal asymptote is y equals negative pi over 2. And the graph of arc tangent of x looks like this. It stays in between these two asymptotes. So knowing that as x approaches positive infinity, this is the x-axis, this is the y. So as x increases, we just follow the graph as it goes to the right. Notice that the y value approaches pi over 2. And this is the answer. The limit as x approaches infinity of arc tangent of x is equal to pi over 2. Now let's say if we want to find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same function arc tangent of x. Well, in this case, negative infinity lies towards the left. Positive infinity is on the right side. So we need to follow the curve all the way to the left. And notice that it approaches negative pi over 2. This graph will continue to travel horizontally, staying within the lower horizontal asymptote. So the answer is negative pi over 2. And it's very easy to evaluate a limit if you know the graph of a function. So when evaluating limits of inverse trigonometric functions, it's very, very helpful if you can, if you memorize the shape of the graphs or if you have access to them. Now let's try another example. What is the limit as x approaches 2 of arc tangent of x? And this is going to be, let's see, 1 divided by x minus 2. In this problem, we can't use direct substitution because we're going to have arc tangent of 1 over 2 minus 2. And getting a 0 in the denominator of fraction will make it undefined. So direct substitution is not going to work in this example. Now, when x approaches 2, what's going to happen? The expression 1 over x minus 2 can go to infinity, but we need to be careful with this one. We need to break it up into one-sided limits. Let's start with when x approaches 2 from the left side. So imagine if x was 1.999. If you type in 1 divided by 1.999 minus 2, this will give you negative 1,000. So you get a very large negative number. This tells us that the limit approaches, well, this expression, 1 over x minus 2, approaches negative infinity. So we have the limit as, or rather, let me take that back. We have our tangent of negative infinity. And we know that our tangent of a negative infinity value, that's going to give us negative pi over 2 based on this limit. Now, we need to check not just the left side of limit, but the right side of limit as well. So that is when x approaches 2 from the right side of our tangent 1 over x minus 2. So from the right side, if we were to plug in 2.001, 1 over 2.001 minus 2, make sure to put those last two numbers in parentheses. This will give you positive 1,000, which indicates that 1 over x minus 2 approaches positive infinity. And what you could do is you can graph the rational function. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Now, this rational function is bottom heavy, meaning that the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator. So therefore, we have another horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0, anytime you have a rational function that's bottom heavy. Now, if we were to plug in 3 
we would get 1. So let's say this is a y value of 1. And if we were to plug in 1, 1 over x minus 2 will be negative 1. So this indicates that the shape of the graph looks something like this. So it's bounded by the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. So as x approaches 2 from the left side, we can see that it's going towards a y value of negative infinity, which is what we get here. And as x approaches 2, this is the vertical asymptote, x equals 2. From the right side, notice that it goes up towards positive infinity. Because plug in 2.001 gave us a large positive answer. And we can see the graph agrees with that. So as x approaches 2 from the right, the expression 1 over x minus 2 approaches positive infinity. So we have our tangent of positive infinity. Or if you want to, you can write it this way. You can now say this is equal to the limit as x approaches positive infinity of arc tangent of x. And we know that's going to equal po positive, rather, pi over 2, based on this answer. Now, notice that the left side of the limit and the right side of the limit are not the same. Because they're different, the original limit does not exist. And so that is the answer for this problem. The limit doesn't exist. Now let's work on another example. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of arc cosine 1 over x? Go ahead and try that. So let's begin with the graph of 1 over x. The graph of 1 over x looks like this. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is here, and a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, which is here, because it's bottom heavy. So if we follow the curve as x increases towards positive infinity, this curve approaches a y value of 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity for the expression 1 over x becomes 0. So this is equal to arc cosine of 0. Now what is the arc cosine of 0? Well, we could start with the graph of arc cosine of x. Arc cosine of x has a limited domain. The domain varies from negative 1 to positive 1. And the range is from 0 to pi. So I'm going to extend this. So let's say this is pi over 2, and this is pi. Now, hopefully, you remember your trigonometric values. Cosine of 0 is 1. So in this case, when x is 1, the y value will be 0. Cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. So when x is 0, y will be pi over 2. And then cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. So when x is negative 1, y will be equal to pi. And so the graph looks something like that. So what is arc cosine of 0? All you need to do is basically reverse that equation. If cosine pi over 2 is 0, arc cosine of 0 is pi over 2. So here's 0. 0 is basically the y-axis. That's when x is 0. As we approach 0 from the left, you can see the y value approaches pi over 2. As we approach 0 from the right, the y value approaches pi over 2. So the left-sided and the right-sided limits are the same. So that's our cosine of 0. It's just going to be pi over 2. So that's the answer for uh, that particular problem. Let's work on one more example. Let's say we have the limit as x approaches positive infinity of the expression arc sine 5 plus 2x cubed divided by 4x cubed minus 8. Go ahead and try it. When we're dealing with limits at infinity, what we can do 
with the rational function is we can multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over x cubed. And so if we do that, we're going to have the limit as x approaches infinity of arc sine. And then we're going to have 5 over x cubed plus 2 divided by 4 minus 8 over x cubed. Now the limit as x approaches infinity for 1 over x cubed times some constant, that's going to be 0 because it's bottom heavy. A constant divided by 1,000 raised to the third power will be approximately 0. So this will become 0, that will become 0. So what we're going to have is the arc sine of 2 over 4, which is equal to the arc sine of 1 half. Now, sine of what angle is equal to 1 half? Keep in mind, sine has a limited domain and range. I mean, arc sine. The domain for arc sine is negative, I mean, yeah, negative 1 to 1, and the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, sine, on the other hand, has an unlimited domain, negative infinity to infinity, and the range is negative 1 to 1. That's sine. But for arc sine, it has a limited domain. So you need to pick an answer between qu quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So sine of what angle is 1 half? This is sine pi over 6. So therefore, the arc sine of 1 half is going to equal pi over 6. You simply need to swap these two. So this is the answer to the problem. Here is the graph of arc sine. It has a domain from negative 1 to 1 and a range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So it only exists in quadrants 3 and 4 of the unit circle. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, and sine of 0 is 0. And the graph looks something like this. So pi over 6 will be somewhere in this region, which is, my graph is not perfect, but it's supposed to be around a half. So as you approach pi over 6, you get a value of 1 half. Or as you approach 1 half on the x-axis, the y value is pi over 6. Now, one thing you need to be careful with is that sine 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. But you wouldn't say the arc sine of 1 half is 5 pi over 6, because 5 pi over 6 is not in the range of arc sine. So just be careful with that. So the answer for this problem is just pi over 6. So that's it for this video. So now you know how to solve uh, limits dealing with inverse trigonometric functions. Thanks again for watching.